previously on Medieval News. By the 8th century, the Enel dominate Ulster. Enel King Donal Magay, Micah Enmerch, was the only king of his time to be accorded the title Rex Hiberni, King of Ireland. This is kicking off a long tradition of political power. But in the early 11th century, the King of Munster, Brian Boru, had something to say about that. Brian Boru effectively challenged the High Kings of the Enel dynasty and thereby ended Ulster's political dominance in early Irish history. What's that? I hear you say. I thought Brian Brew defeated the Vikings. Isn't that what I learned in primary school when I was doing my jigsaw map of Ireland? Well, he kind of did and he kind of didn't. So, the standard view is that the Battle of Clontarf ended a war between the Irish and the Vikings, by which Brian Boru broke Viking power in Ireland. However, revisionist historians see it as an Irish civil war in which Brian Boru's monster and its allies defeated the Enail in Leinster and Dublin, and that there were Vikings fighting on both sides. So according to the standard view, after the Battle of Clontarf, the Enail clan's 500 year reign as High Kings of Ireland would be over. And through his victory at Clontarf, Brian Brew would have kicked the Vikings out of Ireland. Developments in genetic research are enabling us to challenge the accepted narratives in Irish history. The researchers couldn't go back to AD 500 for a DNA sample but they could look at patterns in modern O'Neills. And it turns out this was relatively easy because Ireland has one of the oldest surname traditions in the world. Also, whereas in other countries, names reflect professions or townlands, Irish surnames typically refer to ancestors. Traditionally, surnames are passed from father to child. So, Barring adoption and other cases, the handing down of this outward symbol of family is mirrored exactly by the genetic transmission of Y chromosomes from father to son. And in a survey of Y chromosomes of Irish men, a small number of Y chromosome types predominate in Ireland. And in particular, one of those Y chromosomes is very common in the northwest, being found in about one in five men there. When Y chromosomes of O'Neill's and other Enail surnames are analysed, they group up together nicely genetically and they share the dominant Y chromosome type. The Enail clan was clearly dominant. Did Brian Baru manage to create an equivalent or a stronger legacy down south? In Munster, there isn't the same pattern of a single dominant Y chromosome, and thus there's no evidence of a single dominant clan, despite Baru's prominence. That said, the Nails had a 500 year head start. What of the Vikings? Did Brian Baru really kick them out? In a study in 2017 by the RCSI, Researchers detected Norwegian-like ancestry in Irish samples, and they think that this probably reflects migrations during the Viking era. While this component is relatively small, it's a maximum of 20% compared to the native Irish background, the researchers were surprised to find it at higher levels in the Irish than in the Welsh or in the English, although at lower levels in the Irish than those found in the Orkneys, which of course being Northern have traditional ties to Scandinavia. Dr. Cavallari said it was possible the high levels of Norwegian ancestry in the Irish might be confounded if substantial amounts of Irish DNA had found its way to Norway over time. The Vikings were known to steal women when they attacked. And if Vikings brought Gaelic women back to Scandinavia and then had children with them, this could have the effect of reducing genetic differences between the two populations and thus making it seem as if the amount of Viking ancestry in Ireland 
is greater than it actually is. So in the end, genetic research did not give as much clarity as I had hoped for about Brian Brew, the e nail or the Vikings. Brian didn't make much of an impact, poor fella, despite that highly publicised victory. And maybe us Irish were more impacted by the Vikings than we guessed. Or maybe the Vikings are more genetically impacted by us Irish girls than they would have guessed. So it's all pretty inconclusive. But one thing I do know is that there is an absolutely deadly piece of Irish traditional music named after Brian Brew. And I'm going to play that for you right now. <laughs> 